Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh and very good morning to everyone. Uh, welcome to today's webinar hosted by the Centralized Analytical Laboratory, Laboratory Management Department, University Technology Petronas. My name is Muhammad Kero Anwar bin Jamaluddin, the moderator for today's Cal web first ever webinar series titled An Introduction to Electron Microscopy. Before we begin the webinar, I have, to, I have a few notes to be highlighted here. Uh, firstly, we will have designated time to address questions at the end of each presentation. However, you may submit questions at any time during the session through the Microsoft uh, Team chat box. Secondly, uh, I will request everyone on mute to avoid background noises that may distract others from listening to the webinar. Thank you. There are three main objectives of this webinar. Uh, firstly, to enlighten the parti enlighten participants on basic principles of electron microscopy. Secondly, to understand the suitability of sample for electron microscopy analysis. And finally, to explain the booking procedure through ULAB system. Furthermore, uh, these are the expected outcomes. Uh, participant will be able to differentiate uh, between like electron microscopy, distinguish between principle of scanning electron microscope, SEM, field emission scanning electron microscope, FISEM, and transmission electron microscopy, uh, TEM. And student will further understand on sample preparation procedures of electron microscopy. Uh, next is the uh, tentative program for today webinar. Uh, right after this, uh, a video of Carl in the glance will be played. Uh, then we will start with our first topic of this webinar on basic understanding of electron microscopy by our first presenter, uh, Madam Nur Hashila binti Muhammad Hirmizi. While our second presenter, Mr. Muhammad Anwar bin Moe, Abdul Moin, will be presented on will be presenting on uh, microscopy, sample preparation, and result expectations. And ladies and gentlemen, we are here. Uh, we are very honoured uh, today to have Dr. Abi Su Munteng from High Tech Instrument, and as our uh, invited uh, speaker. And she will be talk on the revolution of ultimate luxury imaging in transmission electron microscopy. At the end of this webinar session, Encik Anwar will further explain on ULAB booking procedure, specifically for equipment booking at CAL. Dear all, presenting to you CAL in the glance. Centralized Analytical Laboratory, known as CAL, is one of the service centers under Laboratory Management Department of University Technology Petronas. It was set up to serve the research needs of UTP researchers as well as service requirements by external parties. The overall long-term aspiration is to promote research excellence by ensuring that the requested analytical services comply with international standards. The Centralized Analytical Laboratory, or CAL, is an ISO 17025 accredited laboratory with up to 12 scope of testing capabilities in the field of mechanical, physical, and chemical testing. Uh, we are located in the floor of Block P, University Technology Petronas. CAL provide competent workforce, and we are equipped with state-of-the-art analytical instrument that covers three main clusters are namely material, chemical, and physical. Our mission is to provide an accurate and timely analytical solution with integrity, of course, and total focus on customer satisfaction. We strive to deliver the best.
Okay. Uh, just a little housekeeping. Just a little housekeeping before we get started. Can everyone give a thumbs up? Yes. Thank you. Uh, without further ado, I'm glad to welcome speaker one, Madam Noor Hashila binti Muhammad Hirmizi, who will speak on uh, basic understanding of electron microscopy. Uh, beforehand, I would like to introduce uh, Madam Hashila to all. I believe most of Carl uh, customer know her. Uh, she is a senior executive in Carl. Uh, she received Bachelor of Applied Science in Analytical Chemistry and Master of Science in Chemistry from University of Science Malaysia in 2006 and 2011. Uh, she is currently the cluster leader of material cluster in CAL and she joined CAL since 2013 and has been assigned as PIC for Transmission Electron Microscope, TAM. Besides STEM, she also experienced in handling equipment and theoretical knowledge of equipment under spectroscopy and thermal analysis. Madam Sheila, the floor is yours. Thank you. Okay, hi, Assalamualaikum everyone. Can you hear me? Okay, can everyone hear me? Yes. yes. All right. Yes. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Yes, All right. Yes. So, okay. Uh, so, welcome everyone to our very first CAL webinar. Okay, for the first topic uh, for today is actually on uh, basic understanding of microscopy. Okay, uh, first of all, uh, what is actually a microscope? Okay, I think most of us has uh, been uh, been uh, familiarized with the microscope since uh, we are and we are in the secondary school. Okay, so micro microscope is actually is an instrument that is used to magnify small objects. So basically, uh, we have two types of uh, microscope which is a light microscope and also electron microscope. So uh, basically, uh, obviously the difference is because of the source of uh, energy that we, we are using. So for light microscope, of course, it's using uh, light, which is a visible uh, wave. And also for electron microscope, we are using electron. Okay, uh, for under light microscope, Okay, we have another two types of light microscope, which is compound microscope. Okay, uh, so basically we can see it here. So, okay, so this one is the um, compound microscope. Okay, so uh, for compound microscope, the samples we need to actually uh, slice and a section of specimen is required and the light will pass through the specimen and the image will appear as in two dimension. Okay, so normally stains are, are being used in order to increase the contrast so that we could see the clear uh, image. For the second one, uh, which is stereo microscope. So, so for this one, this is the example of the stereo microscope. So for stereo microscope, we can actually put whole specimen, specimen or parts of the specimen can uh, be viewed and uh, the light is, is actually bounced off uh, from at the surface of the specimen and we can see the image in three dimensional structure and for this one we can see the natural color of the specimen okay so um, and then uh, for this type of microscope normally uh, what is uh, the, the, the material that we normally see is actually as, uh, for example, as plant tissue, uh, human cells, virus, bacteria, and also uh, coronavirus. But that one, we need to view it using uh, electron microscope. Okay. And then uh, for the electron microscope, 
Okay, we have two types actually for electron microscope. The first one is uh, scanning electron microscope. Uh, so for scanning electron microscope is quite similar with the stereo microscope where we can put whole specimen or parts of the specimen. But uh, instead of using light for this time around, we are using electron and the electron is actually bounced off at the surface of the sample. And the image also can be viewed in, in three dimension and the image in is in gray scale color. It can be colored later on, but because of you, we are using electron, okay, because of the wavelength of the electron, so the image can be displayed using uh, in gray scale uh, color, okay. And the last one, the last type of the electron microscope is actually a transmission electron microscope. So basically, uh, for TEM, okay, so normally we call it as TEM. So uh, for TEM, we need to, uh, uh, to have a very fine section of specimen. Okay? The thickness of the specimen for TEM need to be at least uh, less than 150 nanometer. So if let's say you have a nanoparticles or uh, in powder sample or in uh, dissolved in solution, it can be viewed using TEM. And uh, because why we need to very fine uh, section? Because uh, for TEM, the electron need to go through and pass through the sample. And also for this one, similar with the compound uh, microscope, the image will be appeared as in two dimensional and of course uh, in grayscale color. Okay. All right. So next one. Okay. Uh, um, um, the common terms that we use in uh, uh, microscopy is actually uh, magnification and resolution. Okay, so normally when you apply the uh, request uh, at uh, CAL, so normally we ask what is the magnification that you are required. Okay, so what is the meaning actually magnification and the resolution? Okay, for magnification is actually is uh, enlargement of the object image, while for the resolution is the ability to distinguish between separate points, right? So I have four image uh, for us to understand further on the magnification and the resolution. For the first one, okay, uh, we could, right? So this one, we could see the image is very small and then we could not clearly differentiate between uh, the boundaries of the um, material, okay? For this one, the image is actually in low magnification because we could see the object is very small and very low resolution because we could not distinguish between two uh, material. Okay. And then the second one. Okay. For this one, you can see that we can clearly see the, the boundaries between two points, but uh, the 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 size of the image is uh, similar to the previous one. So for this one, uh, the image image is actually in low magnification with high resolution. Okay. And the third one, right? So for this time around, we could see that the image is getting bigger, right? So it has been enlarged to a very high magnification, but we cannot see the boundaries. Okay, here we couldn't see the boundaries. So the image is, is actually in high magnification but very low resolution. Okay, and the fourth one, okay, okay now we can see clearer. We have actually three types of uh, material, uh, three types of material. Okay. Uh, so the image is actually in high magnification and also high resolution. Okay, so I hope from these four images we could have better understanding on magnification and also uh, resolution. So it is very important if let's say you have a one set of sample. Uh, so you need uh, for the for the comparison you need to actually compare at same magnification. 
so that uh, your viewer or your when you write in the paper uh, the reviewer and also the the uh, person who read your paper will clearly understand and uh, apa, it could see the difference between uh, each sample at same magnification okay and also for the resolution uh, so, you, so in, uh, you just need to make, uh, to make sure that the particular the 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 things that you want to measure or you things that you want to see the size is actually uh, higher than uh, the lowest resolution of the equipment okay if let's say you have a particles uh, at 2 nanometer but then your tm let's say eh, let's say if your tm uh, the lowest resolution that uh, you, TM half is 2.5 um, and so that uh, for this for this case you cannot see uh, clearer the particle size because the size is getting is much more lower than the uh, lowest re resolution of the equipment okay right so okay so in order for us to to clearly understand uh, the stage that we are looking at okay, uh, for electron microscope. So we have the resolving uh, power of microscope comparison here. Okay. For example, let's say uh, with our naked eye, okay, so we can only uh, see um, around one meter distance. Okay, which is similar to height of five-year-old child and up until uh, the thickness of human hair, which is around uh, 0 0.1 uh, millimeter, okay, which is uh, roughly around 100 micrometer. Okay, so uh, below than that, our eye cannot be, cannot differentiate. So uh, the, the, the particles, okay, so that is where we need to uh, seek assistance from light microscope okay so for light microscope normally the resolving power is actually in the range of uh, 100 micrometer which is similar to the thickness of human hair up until size of bacteria okay and then further from that if you have even smaller uh, virus dna molecule glucose molecule and atom we need to see it using under uh, electron microscope where the resolution can be up to 0 0.1 nanometer okay but uh, normally okay in uh, UTP or CAL specifically so we seldom receive sample this kind of sample like bacteria uh, glucose molecule uh, red blood cell so uh, as far as uh, uh, 10 years uh, with CAL uh, we did not receive any of this sample. So mostly, uh, because since we are working mostly in the material field, so what the common sample that we receive is actually uh, nanoparticle. Uh, for example, like uh, carbon nanotubes, uh, graphene. Uh, so lately coming from uh, mzine, uh, titan oxide, okay, and uh, alloy material to study the uh, microstructure right okay okay then we will go deeply on the electron microscope okay as per previous mention the application of the uh, electron microscope is not uh, is very vast and is not limited uh, into uh, biomedical research forensic and also uh, material technology as well and then uh, how it works okay so maybe later on we will see uh, we will see deeply on this but as overall uh, actually uh, how electron microscope works is by accelerating a focus stream of electron in a vacuum towards a sample and then they will have interaction between the electron beam as well uh, with the sample and it will create an image so why we need to to operate in in, in vacuum uh, so it because of the 
electron. Okay. Uh, because we know that the electron, the wavelength of the electron is actually very small. It's roughly around 0 0.0037 nanometer. And our visible uh, light wavelength is actually around 400 to 800 nanometer. Okay. So it's very, the wavelength is very small. So if let's say we operate the TEM, the EM, uh, electron microscope in ambient condition, as we know that in ambient condition, it contains a lot of gas molecules, the, uh, the uh, moisture, and it will, so when uh, the electron has uh, produced at the uh, gun, uh, it cannot directly go to the sample. It will deflect to other um, other section. So in order to to make sure that the electron stream uh, hit the sample, so we need to operate in vacuum. Okay, and then uh, like previously previously mentioned, uh, there are three types of electron microscope, which is TEM, SEM, and also FESEM. Right. Okay. So, what is actually SEM, FISEM, and TEM? Okay. So, so this is the example of SE, uh, image of the SEM and FISEM. So, SEM and FISEM it use a very fine beam uh, of focused electron to scan a sample surface. So, you need SEM, FISEM in order to to, to know the structure of the sample. So if you, if you, uh, so the difference between SAM and FISAM is just the electron gun. So FISAM normally, uh, it gave higher resolution compared to SEM. While in, uh, on the other hand, for TEM, okay, it used a broad beam of electron to create an image of sample in of sample of inter, uh, the internal structure of the sample. So basically, if you would like to know the particle size, okay, uh, you can uh, you can use both SEM and FISEM as well as TEM. Okay, so uh, so maybe later uh, in Chiano we show the example of image, so you can see clearer uh, how can we main, uh, we measure the particle size. And for TM, uh, the internal structure is actually, uh, for example, like uh, CNT. Okay. So this one is the example of uh, image of uh, carbon nanotubes where we can clearly see the inner tube of the material. Okay. And if we can zoom in uh, the, uh, the image, actually, uh, we can also see the layer of the wall of carbon nanotubes. All right. Okay, the next one. Okay. So how SEM and FISEM works? Okay, we will use two di uh, same diagram in order to elaborate on TEM and SEM FISEM so that you can see the uh, the difference, okay? So like I said before, okay? Uh we uh we have the incident electron at the electron gun so we will um, so the, the electron will be uh, projected towards the sample and then it will give a uh, various kind of interaction uh, wave okay so for example like back scattered electron secondary electron order electron and also characteristic X-ray, uh, cathodoluminescence, and also the transmitted electron. Okay. So what is the electron that being uh, responsible to generate SAM and FISAM image? So only two, backscattered and also secondary electron. Okay. So from these two, it will give you the SEM image. Okay, for secondary electron, it will give you the topography structure while the backscatter electron, or normally we call it as BSE, it will give the compositional uh, structure where we can see if let's say we viewed uh, several, uh, a mixture of element, okay, 
the element with a high atomic number, it will, uh, with high density, it will give um, darker uh, image compared to light element, right? So this is SEM FISEM. So electron will hit the sample and it will bounce back and uh, and generate backscattered and secondary electron. Okay, so I hope it, it clears for SEM uh, working um, condition. And the next one we will see on the TEM. So for TEM, okay, if let's say we have, uh, we have uh, the electron beam, so it will pass through the sample and then it will give a transmitted electron and also elastically scattered electron, right? So these two is responsible to give the TEM image, okay? So what is the rest um, uh, electron uh, responsible for, okay? So for order electron is actually we are we are using it, okay? Uh, we uh, together with SPS in order to study the transition state of an element. So if let's say you have a copper oxide, so you want to know whether the copper oxide is in uh, copper two plus or copper three plus. So you you can use uh, order electron. Okay. How about the characteristic X-ray? Uh, for this one, if let's say you are requesting for TM or FISEM together with EDX and mapping, so you will be using X-ray, characteristic X-ray. So this one, it will give you the elemental uh, analysis. So where we could know what are the elements exist in your sample. Okay, and then for the cathode cathode luminescence is actually for the lumis luminescent material such as as uh, phosphor okay and last but not least for the in elastically scattered electron that one we use it for uh, diffraction analysis in um, uh, tem okay okay so the next one is will be the interaction volume for each of the uh, electrons. Okay, so like previously mentioned, okay, the secondary electrons and back uh, for SEM, SEM, eh, SEM, FISEM, it only looking at the surface. Okay, so this is the uh, primary electron beam. When it hit the sample, so at this area with uh, in the range of 100 nanometer, it will give the secondary electron. Okay. Further deep, it will generate the backscattered electron. And uh, of course, order electron at very surface of the uh, surface of the sample. And the rest, okay, uh, the X-ray, the fluorescent X-ray and... Um, Electrons is um, the range is at 10 uh, micrometer. Okay, so this is the penetration depth of each type of electron. Okay, right. So, how is the configuration of SCM and TEM? So, basically, uh, we can only see, uh, of course, we couldn't see if you come to CAL. Of course, you couldn't see all this thing because it has been covered in a, a, a special a column. Okay, so basically, uh, the configuration of SAM and TM it consists of uh, this uh, roughly five elements. Okay, so we have the electron gun at the at the upper parts, and then uh, for this one, the electron. Okay, the electron are emitted from a filament. And it will be accelerated by anode. Okay, anode is actually a strong, uh, a strong elect electrical field. And then after that, uh, okay, for uh, electron gun, electron gun is actually we have several type of electron gun. Okay, uh, uh, field emission, uh, tungsten, uh, which 
will be elaborated further uh, in uh, next session uh, for Encik Anwar session. Okay. And then after that, um, we have the condenser, condenser lens. Okay. The condenser lens is actually um, an electro, electromagnetic uh, coil used to converge the electron beam into fine beam. So we can see here from uh, broad beam, it has been converged into a very fine, a fine beam. So, it, so here we can see that actually the difference between TEM and SEM. So where TEM, the sample is actually in the middle. So because we need the beam to pass through the sample, right? So it need to be, it, it need to have, it should be at the middle of the uh, column, right? So uh, when it pass through the sample, it will goes, uh, will goes to the objective lens. So what will the objective lens do? Uh, so objective lens is actually, is responsible to converge the electron beam because once the electron beam um, hit through the uh, sample, it will converge a bit and then it will um, will uh, make into a very fine beam focus at the uh, using the objective lens also the intermediate lens and as well as the projector lens and the image will be displayed in uh, at the fluorescent screen but uh, think right now we this, we couldn't see any any more the fluorescent screen because it is being directly attached with a camera so that we can see the display in the computer okay so on the other hand for sem uh, the sample is actually at the bottom part of the column so we have all the lens we have all the um, electron gun at the part at the upper part and then when it goes, uh, it will pass through the detector and hit the sample. So here, so normally this one is at the uh, sample chamber. So we will have other types of detector as well. So X-ray detector, secondary electron detector and everything. Okay, so for TEM, if let's say we need to, to, to attach with uh, EDX, it will also have um, attachment with other detector as well. Okay. Okay. So, um, so we can uh, we can actually see the table here. Uh, the comparison between SEM, FISEM, and TEM. Okay. Of course, the electron stream that we use for SEM is a very a fine and focused beam while TM we hit the sample the beam is actually broad okay so for the image of SEM so you will only see the surface okay and for TM you will see the internal structure okay if let's say the sam your sample is very thick okay you could not see anything but you can only see only black color of the uh, image particles you couldn't see you couldn't see any uh, apa, uh, arrangement of uh, lattice and everything so you, you need to to have a, a very fine sample in order to proceed with tm analysis okay so in term of resolution um, sem give a lower res resolution compared to uh, tm and the magnification, uh, but for this one, it really depends on the sample and also the unit that, uh, the type of unit that we have. Okay. Uh, for SEM, the highest magnification can go up to 500 times, 500K times. Uh, how, uh, however, for TEM, it can go up to 1 million times. So basically, for let's say, uh, to 
to see the internal structure of the element normally we can uh, go up to 600k 800k uh, we should be able to see the internal structure already okay and the image dimension SEM is in uh, three dimension while TEM is in two dimension okay if you have thin and thick samples yes you can analyze it using SEM but if you have um, uh, thin sample uh, it, okay for TEM you can only proceed for ultra thin samples only so if you have thick sample you need to find a way to uh, to reduce the thickness up to uh, level uh, that being accepted for TEM okay right so uh, for penetration like previously mentioned it uh, for TEM it penetrates through the sample and then uh, so in term of sample restri restriction of course TEM is more restrictive so uh, you can't really analyze all of your specimen using TEM okay especially if let's say you have um, solid metal uh, so we need to to undergo a very um, uh, stringent <laughs> party, uh, sample preparation procedure okay so uh, on in term of sample preparation uh, for SEM uh, less preparation required but TEM is uh, more uh, complicated but if let's let's say you have a liquid sample and powder sample is is easier okay in term of course uh, TEM is much more expensive in term of speed also uh, the analysis is much more uh, slower compared to uh, SEM and uh, in term of operation as well uh, TEM is uh, quite complicated but uh, from time to time is uh, should be okay but for SEM uh, normally it's easy but of course it still requires uh, training okay so uh, so so what is the microscope that is, that is available at Cal? Okay, we have actually four types of microscope. Okay, we have light optical microscope, uh, FESEM, uh, SEM with a uh, tungsten uh, type of uh, electron gun and also uh, TEM. One, only one unit of TEM uh, with uh, the electron gun that we are using is uh, LAB6. Alright, so I think that's the end of the my session then i will pass uh, the floor to our moderator thank you very much uh, madam nohashila uh, i hope you all enjoy this amazing presentation uh, we will go ahead and take some time for questions now uh, just a reminder you may raise up your hand to ask a question or you may drop a question in the chat box. So open to the floor. Any question from uh, participants? Okay, we have a few questions from the audience. Uh, Mr. Muhammad Azad Alam. Uh, Assalamu alaikum. Good morning to everyone. Uh, hi ma'am, I have a question regarding the uh, TEM. If my sample is a powder and uh, I am having a sample also in a solid form. So powder also uh, required the preparation or only the solid samples? If only the solid sample, then what is the procedure to uh, take into account for the before the imaging? Uh, it is for TEM, right? Mr. Yeah. Zan? Okay, yeah, for yeah, yeah. TEM, for powder sample, uh, maybe later Mr. Mr. Anwar will further uh, uh, discuss uh, details on this, but uh, normally we we can just prep by dissolving the sample in uh, so, uh, solvent. So commonly we use is actually isopropanol and ethanol. Even water also can, 
we can use as long as the sample can uh, stable. And then we just mm -hmm. disperse and drop on the copper grid. But if let's say you have a solid, what type of solid actually do you have? A solid the means uh, metal, metal. The size is, uh, you know, 12 mm diameter and 5 mm oh, okay. thickness. So that's yeah. one uh, you need to very, uh, to go a very a series of sample prep. Okay, mm -hmm. uh, it involves milling and everything. So uh, the details maybe uh, will be elaborated more during the next session for the sample preparation. Okay, thank okay. you. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Uh, next, uh, Mr. Abdul Salam Elsir. Please raise up the question. Yeah. Yeah. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum salam. Uh, can hear me. Okay, the instructor mentioned that in SEM, the sample should be thin and thick. How it is, how it is, uh, how thin is thin and how thick is thick? You understand me? Okay, for SEM, right? Yeah, for SEM, yeah. Okay, uh, it, it, for SEM, it depends on the sample chamber. As long as it can fit with the uh, sample holder that we have, we can actually uh, analyze the sample. But it will take, if let's say the sample is bigger, it will take uh, quite some time in order to uh, vacuum the chamber back. Because once we put in the samples, we open and then we put in the sample and we need, we need to uh, ram down the vacuum. So if let's say the sample is bigger, it will take time to uh to um to reach the vacuum that is required so normally uh, we advise the students because um uh, we advise the student to cut the sample into very small uh, small uh, dimension so let's say maybe one times uh, 0 0.5 or 0 0.5 or highest maybe one to one one times one cm Okay, to reduce the time for um, apa, uh, vacuum procedure. Mm. Uh, and then uh, normally in one session, we does not put only one sample. So we can put actually four samples, so it will save time because we doesn't need to uh, put in <laughs> and run and uh, vamp down and take out the sample and put in and the samples. Normally, uh, one session we put all four sample so that uh, it will reduce the time for analysis. Okay. All right. Yeah, thank you. For for all right. Uh, for M A uh, M for S for uh, another device is uh, for F E S E M is similar. Sorry. Yes, similar, similar. Actually, the the principle of FISM and SEM is the same. It's just that the type of electron gun used and it affects the uh -huh. resolution. So normally, if let's say you just require a very low magnification, for example, you have biomass material, so you don't really need FESEM. So what you need is actually only SEM. So it depends on the material. If let's say you, you require for nanoparticles, uh, yes, you do require for FESEM. Okay. 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 Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Next, we have Mr. Haruna Abdul Rashid for the last question, maybe. Yeah. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullah. Good morning. Thank you very Salam. much for the wonderful presentation. Hello. Can you hear me? Yes. 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 I can. Proceed. Yeah. Thank you very much, Nur Hashila, for the wonderful presentation. Uh, actually, I have followed the discussion from the beginning till now. And uh, I'm happy I have understood most part of the lecture. But my question is with regard to the journal publication. For some of us that will do the analysis in fundamental and applied sciences under the chemistry unit, it is important uh, for us to know whether we need to include the machine specification in terms of writing a particular uh, paper, OK? Now, what I mean by that is that in an event where I need to report my FE same result, same or same result. Is there a particular, is, is it a particular criteria to report the specific uh, 
uh, specification of the machine? Is it a requirement of actually this is an this is an area we use what to my, neglect? What okay? my, you know, if you want to be good to people, some people we that doesn't mean that you will not be good to people. But your my first attempt if I for, first meet you, your reaction, second reaction, I will just even remove you immediately with immediate effect. Wasting my time unnecessarily. Yeah. <laughs> Hello, this background uh, message is not actually from me. I've just asked my question, Nur Hashila. I hope you have gotten that. Oh, I need yeah. to say that again. Okay, uh, I guess, uh, okay, for normally, uh, from what I see from the paper, so they, um, they um, uh, reported uh, the highest KV. Uh, for FE, FESCM, the highest KV uh, brand and model, that's it. But of course, in terms of um, when you publish the image, it needs to come with the uh, the scale bar. And that is common uh, requirement for the... But for the equipment details, uh, normally, uh, uh, you need to provide the uh, KV, the highest KV and okay. also brand and also model. I think most most paper that we I see is enough already. Okay, yeah, that's okay, beautiful but, because... But if okay, you have, can, if yeah. you require further details, all, you can always uh, uh, ask us for further details. Okay. okay. All right. Yeah, thank you, I appreciate. Because this is necessary sometimes, especially if it is high impact journal, and they will always require for these uh, details, but I'm happy that you say whenever we need the information, it will be given to us. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you. All right, thank you. Uh, dear all, uh, we have run out of time for additional questions. Uh, Madam Nawashila, uh, we have a few questions also in the chat box. Uh, nevertheless, uh, we have your details. Uh, we may answer your question after this webinar session. Yeah? Uh, thank you. Uh, thank you again, Madam Nashila, for answering those questions. Uh, next, uh, our second speaker is Mr. Muhammad Anwar bin Abdul Moen. Uh, he will be talking on microscopy sample preparation and result expectation. Uh, he is the lead technologist in CAL. He graduated from University, Technology, University Science Malaysia in Bachelor of Applied Science, major in Physics in 2021. And Che Anwar joined CAL since 2010, and he has been assigned as PIC for Field image, Emission Scanning Electron Microscope, FISEM, the most highly sought after equipment at CAL. Uh, before, before he joined CAL, he has been working at Material Characterization Laboratory under Mechanical Engineering Department, UTP, and then with more than 20 years of experience in material field, his expertise in sample preparations and requirement for electron microscopy made him as one of the source of referral for the UG and PG student in UTP. Uh, just a reminder, uh, you may raise up your hand to ask questions during the Q&A session or you may uh, uh, at any time drop a question in a chat box. Uh, thank you. And Mr. Anwar, you may start the presentation, please. Uh, Assalamualaikum and a very good morning. Uh, thank you, Mr. Cairo Anwar, is our moderator today. Okay, um, before I go to sample preparation of uh, microscopy, uh, I, uh, let me explain a little bit about um, what is the main difference between FSM and uh, SEM. Uh, as you can see, uh, can you see my, my cursor? Oh, yeah. Uh, as you can see <clears throat> here, there are uh, different type of uh, emitter, which is uh, thermionic uh, emitter using a tungsten and also uh, uh, lab six. 
Uh, but uh, FECM uh, normally are using uh, short key uh, thermal field emission or short key TFE or we normally we call a uh, field emission gun and also uh, coal FE, coal uh, field emission. <coughs> um, in UTP we are using, uh, our system in UTP are using uh, uh, short key uh, uh, thermal field emission. Uh, which is uh, this one. Eh? Uh, this is an uh, image of the tungsten filament. Uh, this is an uh, image of a uh, lapsic editor. And this is our FECM use is uh, thermal field emission. Uh, as, uh, as we know, uh, FECM is uh, advanced uh, microscope offering increased magnification and the ability to observe a very fine uh, features at the lower voltage is compared to uh, SEM. Uh, FISEM also can observe image at a very low KV, uh, which is uh, 1 KV, but SEM we can get image at that uh, KV, which is a, a low KV. Uh, normally, SEM is a good in imaging at about uh, 10 KV to 20 KV. So SEM is uh, normally used for uh, uh, used for uh, for low magnification imaging compared to SEM used for high magnification uh, imaging. Uh, but cost of the equipment and maintenance uh, SEM is uh, less uh, expensive uh, compared to FSM. Uh, Next, uh, next. Okay, this uh, uh, sample type for SEM and uh, uh, FECM and also the SEM. Uh, as uh, we know, uh, what Sheila is already uh, told, FECM or SEM uh, is uh, using a high vacuum chamber. Uh, because of the evolving in the high vacuum, the sample must be in the dry condition. Uh, your sample uh, prepared, your prepared sample uh, normally can be some, sometimes can be a uh, powder, can be a solid or shell, or sometimes a rock, and also can be a membrane or thin film, uh, and also can be a uh, uh, electronic devices. Um, <clears throat> just in case, if you have a sample in the liquid form. Uh, such as I, I re just received a previous one is a, a gold powder in the solvent. Uh, normally, your sample can be prepared, but I will prepare your sample into aluminum stud, and then we will put your sample to dry cabinet to make the sample uh, free from uh, any liquid before we load the we load to the FCM or SEM chamber. <coughs> Uh, for a sample sample preparation, this is uh, very basic. Uh, first step, we we normally we do a sample selection. Okay, there are actually uh, three step, three uh, basic step to to prepare the sample. First, uh, a sample selection. Uh, it means you have or you need to always select a good sample to be analyzed. And then uh, you have must uh, a suitable to your sample must be a suitable to the size of uh, aluminum stud and also our chamber. The sample cannot be a very big sample or, or big and porous sample. And uh, if you have a very big and a porous sample, uh, it will affect the vacuum time and also sometimes is a uh, fail to complete the vacuum so we need to remove uh, bend back your sample and do uh, modification again for your sample uh, the second step is uh, to stick the sample to aluminium after we we, we uh, do a selection of the good sample and then your sample will be stick to the aluminium stud and then uh, do another go to the uh, the, text, the third step, which is uh, either we do 
we need to do a gold coating or no need to do a gold coating. Actually, your sample, they have a two type of uh, sample and you must be identified, which is your sample is a insulator or a conductive sample. Okay, let's say if your sample is clear, clearly known as an uh, insulator, uh, such as a plastic or rock sample, normally the sample we go for gold coating. Okay, to make the sample uh, in good, uh, to sample uh, conductive. But if your sample is uh, always, but your sample is uh, already a conductive sample, normally uh, I will uh, straight uh, prepare or the start and go direct to the vacuum chamber. Uh, no need to do uh, any coating. Okay, the the problem. Okay, actually the the problem with the insulator sample normally the image can be uh, go to a very high magnification. Okay, uh, okay. For the next slide, there are a video on uh, how to prepare a sample for FPSM. <coughs> okay, hope you uh, enjoy it.
Okay, uh, thank you. Hope hope you uh, understand a little bit about uh, basic uh, sample preparation before I do uh, SEM, FECM. And this slide is a uh, acceptable sample of submission. Uh, as you can see at this slide, um, uh, at the first sample is a rock uh, or shale. Normally your sample, uh, I just uh, recommend to, to, to put in the zip bag. Okay, this is uh, acceptable for uh, submission. And if your sample have a, a mounted solid sample, this a uh, metal, and then do a, a cool mounting, this is a uh, hot mounting. Normally you can uh, put your sample in the zip, also in the zip bag and also uh, in the uh, plastic case this is to avoid the uh, contaminate when you do when you submit the sample to the submission room and uh, very important now here is a third sample if you have a powder sample okay is uh, have a, we have a lot of powder sample here and then uh, highly recommend uh, you to put your sample in the glass vial or uh, using a glass bottle Okay, uh, this one is for membrane. You can put uh, a sample in the also in the zip bag, or sometimes the uh, the student also put the sample in the aluminium foil. Okay, uh, next. Okay, this uh, uh, example of the unacceptable uh, sample for submission. Okay, the first image normally this one is a powder sample. They just uh, give uh, like just put in the plastic bag like this and for us it's not very easy to handle this one so i recommend to put your sample in the glass vial use in the proper glass vial okay same goes to the uh, sample number two uh, this is the student uh, didn't bring any plastic or the bottle, they use our uh, our zip bag. Okay, this uh, green zip bag actually is belong to uh, our submission room, and then the student uh, directly put the sample powder direct to the, that bag. Actually, it's not it's not recommend like that. The third sample is a uh, large for for or large core. Uh, you can send the core sample, but you have to uh, prepare can be this size but not this size can be the diameter of this size but you need to to cut until you get about maximum of uh, 5 mm thickness it's more than that i cannot do any vacuum in the system uh, last sample is uh, liquid uh, something uh, also cannot be accept because uh, we use a high vacuum then liquid cannot be a vacuum okay this uh, sample type for uh, tm okay tm if you can see here there's a green and also the red it's mean uh, powder and liquid actually is very easy to to prep but the membrane and solid we need a special tools okay to prepare the sample okay um, let's say you have a membrane normally uh, support tool we have here is uh, actra microtome this means we need a long time to do a preparation. Uh, normally, I will I will do the preparation with the student. Sometimes I will teach the student also if they have more than one sample. Okay, same goes to the solid sample. We need to do. You need to use. Uh, we need to prep your sample until you get about uh, thickness. Uh, about thickness is uh, 100, 100 nanometer. Uh, 100 micrometer with the diameter of uh, 3 mm they are using a very uh, special tool to do all this thing uh, okay next okay simple uh, preparation for tm as you can see here uh, this is the basic simple preparation for tm and then the sample must be in uh, powder form or liquid 
Okay, first uh, we need to disperse your sample in the solvent uh, using uh, IPA or isopropanol. And also we disperse process normally take about 15 minutes by using the ultrasonic bulb. Again, and then to match uh, to to make sure the particle dispersed to a single part particle, and then we do a drop two or three drop on the TM copper grid, and then let it dry at uh, ambient temperature before we put the copper grid into the TM holder before we put in the TM chamber. Okay, on the next slide is uh, we show a video on basic sample preparation for TM. I okay, hope you uh, enjoy it. Okay, thanks for the staying for the video. Okay, next is a uh, result expectation. Now it's uh, goes to FSM or also SAM. Okay, when you analyze your when you analyze the sample uh, in electron microscope, either you using FSM or using SEM, even though you are using TM, uh, it's all about imaging. So what you what the information in the data you get from imaging is uh, uh, other than your expected uh, image. You need to understand actually the the bottom uh, data uh, which is uh, at the bottom image at the bottom of the image. Okay. So uh, the most important. Uh, the most important thing is a uh, scale, which is uh, at the left side. You have a scale here. This is very important. If you cut off this, your image is not valid anymore. Okay. Uh, next is the uh, is the EHT. EHT is a uh, energy high tension, which is the uh, voltage in uh, kV we setting when do imaging. Next is uh, WD is a walking distance, 
which is uh, setting from electron gun to the surface to the sample surface to the sample to the surface of the sample okay uh, when we use a low kv normally we need we need to adjust the working distance also uh, the the, uh, the lower at the low uh, the low working distance to to get the clear and a good image okay psm okay and that's uh, the signal okay psm has a uh, a uh, different as a various signal actually as a various signal which is a secondary electron uh, which is a se2 we have a special inlet the special signal this is special for high magnification this is we call in lens uh, signal we have a, a variable pressure and we we also have a asb asb or normally we call a back scattered detector okay uh, while uh, sem they give you the same uh, data information here but sem only have uh, two uh, signal which is a secondary electron and also a back scattered uh, electron back scattered uh, detector okay mag here is a mag actually is for magnification normally they will show you how many magnification we captured at that time and normally the magnification for fsm can be as low as a 20x to maximum about 300,000 x uh, depend on uh, depend on the sample it's not all sample can go to very high magnification only we can use in lens to go to high magnification if your sample is uh, quite uh, not a uh, good conductive normally we, we can go to very high magnification and also we can use the in lens detector <clears throat> okay uh, other information is a uh, uh, date this is a uh, actual date captured and also the the, the actual time captured when i uh, when we do uh, uh, capturing the image this is this data all will be recorded together okay next <coughs> Okay, this uh, result expectation, uh, example of the result from the SEM. Okay, the uh, first image is a uh, fiber membrane. It's about, uh, this is uh, at 1,000 uh, magnification, 1,000x. Second image is uh, a catalyst at 10,000x. Okay, let's compare these two. This, this is also membrane, this is uh, 1,000. This one is uh, 5,000x. For the second image is a catalyst. This is captured at uh, 10,000 compared to a uh, 5,000 x. And the image, this this one is the image for graphene uh, captured at uh, 5,000 x. And the below one is is a uh, polymer membrane at the cross section area. I take uh, just about 300 x. Okay. Okay, next, uh, also the result expectation, this is for FSM. Uh, the first image is the clay mineral. Uh, this one they captured at uh, 10,000 uh, kx magnification. Uh, as I know, this uh, image, uh, well known by geologists, known as a clay mineral, they call it a pyrite. This is what I know. Huh? And then the neck also the clay mineral we can see uh, at 5000 uh, x is a crystal structure at 1000 and also this image from uh, biomass sample at 500 x okay this uh, sample uh, normally is not normally this is uh, must be coating with the gold before we uh, put in the SEM, FSM chamber if not we cannot get uh, image as uh, clear as like this Okay, next slide. Uh, also for 
result expression for FSM is a cross uh, membrane a cross section. I do at the 500x. It's the same sample. This one a uh, top uh, surface membrane do at a uh, 1000 kilo x. Normally, if you send a, a membrane sample, you will get a two position. Normally, I will do for you a cross section, and we can measure the thickness, and also I will do the top uh, surface. Normally, we can analyze the morphology of the surface. Okay, this is a carbon nanotube. I run at a 50 kilo, uh, 50 uh, thousand magnification, and we normally we can measure the size of the diameter of the CMT. Same goes to nanoparticle. This just I run at uh, 30 thousand magnification. And one also we can measure the particle size. And the last one is uh, zinc oxide at uh, 50,000 kilo, 50,000 uh, magnification. Okay. Uh, next slide, Shla. All right. Uh, this is also the example I received. The uh, sample. This uh, first sample is biochar. I take about 500x. It's a spin coating membrane, uh, also at 500x. Uh, and uh, okay, this one is a metallographic carbon steel. This uh, sample, uh, before we get this one, you have to do some process, which is we have we have to do the uh, mounting the sample, uh, grinding, uh, grinding the sample, uh, polishing the uh, polishing and polishing until you get a mirror finish and then you do uh, etching, etching process with the etching chemical and then after you analyze under microscope uh, we can do other uh, we can also uh, run under light microscope and then we can see the image like this but this one if you want one more uh, higher magnification normally we put the sample under SEM or FSM and then we can go more than uh, 1000 if it's a uh, microscope uh, light microscope normally go to maximum of about 500x but for ACM or FSM we can go more can go more than that for this example I run at uh, 1000x and then uh, this is a graphene at the top surface we uh, add a uh, 10,000 magnification Next, lah. Okay, this is for TEM. Uh, the first image is a CNT at uh, 50 kilo x, 50 50 thousand magnification actually. So we can see a very small. I think this is a, a single wall CNT. At below here, uh, CNT at uh, 1000 1000 k magnification. Okay, actually it's a 1 million magnification. And then we can see the, okay, this is a, a multi-wall CNT. You can see the wall, you can see the hollow here. And then we can measure, actually we can measure the thickness layer here. Alright, okay, this is graphene at 30k magnification. Okay, we can see this uh, graphene sheet here. Okay, here is graphene sheet. Oh. Image become blur. Okay, and then this is a carbon mesh, not the sample. On the sample is this one. All right, yeah, this is the sample. Okay, same goes to below here. It's a graphene at uh, one million x. Actually, we can see the uh, actually the layer of the graphene here. In this image, is very small. If we go to direct to the machine, we can see uh, clearly it's a, a graphene layer. And next is a TiO2. It's a, considered as a nanoparticle. We can measure the size. And this is also TiO2 at uh, 400,000 X. Okay, next. Okay, last but not least, this is a... Uh, Elemental analysis, normally when we do imaging, we have a extra 
extra, uh, extra function in the equipment. Our three, uh, all equipment, all uh, our equipment is uh, equipped with the uh, elemental uh, analysis, which is uh, EDS. EDS actually stands for uh, energy dispersive X-ray spectroscopy. Normally they call EDX or sometimes they call EDS. It's the same one. Actually, it's function to identify the element and also the chemical analysis of the sample. Okay. All right. Um, next. Okay, this is also elemental uh, analysis, but it's called normally we call this one as a mapping, elemental mapping. The function is to get distribution of the element of the map. Normally, if you have, uh, if you prepare the sample, a pure sample, and you embed it with another sample, and then you want to prove something. We want to prove if you already get the, the, the embedded sample or not. Normally, we are running, we run for elemental mapping, and then we can see the position of the added particle. Okay. Uh, thank you. Thank you again, uh, Mr. Anwar, for answering those questions. Uh, okay, uh, it's now my pleasure to introduce uh, our invited speaker, Dr. Abi Su Munteng, Technical PA and Application Specialist from High Tech Instrument Program Berhad. Uh, allow me to read uh, through Dr. Abi background here. Uh, Dr. Abi received her Bachelor of Engineering with Honor Degree from University of Malaya and Master of Science de Degree in Material Engineering from University uh, Science Mal Malaysia. She continued her research at the University of Queensland, Australia and obtained her PhD degree in Material Engineering in 2017. Her research is on optimize the growth of different types of 3-5 nanowires using MOCVD, metal organic chemical vapor deposition, and applied different analysis technique in electron microscopy. Before she joins high in 2018, she is working at Center for Microscopy at Microanalysis CMM, University of Queensland provided analytical CM training for the researchers from both academic and industry. With that, I would like to invite Dr. Abby and she will be talking on revolution of ultimate luxury imaging in transmission electron microscopy. Please welcome Dr. Abby. Yeah. Hi everyone. Yeah. Can, uh, is my voice clear? Yes, very clear Dr. Okay, uh, I will share my screen. Okay. Mr. Anwar may need your help to remind me five minutes before the, the time that given to me. Sure, doctor, no problem. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you. So, yeah. Um, good morning, everyone. Yeah, I uh, today the presentation for this one is actually want to expose uh, to you all, especially this one. I would um, introduce the TEM that you have in uh, uh, call UTP now. So the revolution uh, imaging, uh, luxury imaging using this twenty to hundred twenty kV TEM with this dual mode objective lens. Uh, it's applicable for both life sciences and material science. And understanding that uh, for um, have uh, examples on mostly on the material sample, and a little bit introduction of this uh, TEM that you have in uh, the center, and after understanding of the uh, TEM, I hope it helps you all to determine what kind of result that you can obtain using the TEM and what are the things that you may not aware of the, the function that are um, applicable using this TEM. And yes, uh, this is actually focused more on the uh, low KV TEM advantages. So to highlight this one is actually they are ex explained by um, Sheila, uh, Sheila and also Anwar just now 
on the sample prep part, I think it's the Sheila part that uh, they are actually, you you have various kind of T, uh, TM samples, but it's very important for uh, the T, uh, sample preparation. Uh, the sample, prat, uh, sample prep part, TEM is actually, you involve uh, a little bit more works compared with SEM. And, uh, and this is actually the TM read. Usually, I think um, the officer in uh, CAL, they actually will help you to handle the how to prepare the sample. But very common one is this one. Uh, and most of the people, they bring in the sample will be powder sample. And important that you prepare your powder sample, uh, that you very to, to, to grind it uh, fine and to spread spread on uh, the TEM grid. And all this, I think the spreading and everything, uh, uh, yeah, yeah, the officer actually will help you to do that. And for this one is, um, I think you all have the ultra microtome uh, uh, facility also in Kao. So this is the ultra microtomy session. So for this kind of sample, the TM grid that you use is a little bit different. You don't have the carbon film here. It's only the T, uh, the copper grid. This one you actually see that in between the TM copper grid, uh, TM, uh, uh, yeah, the copper grid here, you see the powder actually spread on on some empty space. This actually, yeah, a, a layer of carbon or the carbon layer or some kind of the yeah the foil on top of this TM grid. There are different type of TM grid are uh, available as well. And yes, this is another another type of uh, is material uh, sample, uh, but it's prepared using the thinning and also um, uh, thinning and polishing of the sample. And this one is another available TEM sample prep. It, we call it uh, FIB, Focus Ion Beam. Um, not so not so common in the UNICE because uh, Focus Ion Beam is another um kind of like quite 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 good equipment that using uh iron beam to to thin down your sample to 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 prepare a very thin layer so if you're using your eyes for example this one if uh the more transparent the sample is the better it is to be observed in tm and like let's say for this one tm sample you if you can see all this dark color powder here if you go into tem all this sample is actually very thick for TEM observation. So, so and some of the area uh, like this one, you see like empty area. But when you go in TEM, it's actually you can observe the nano uh, uh, particles or your nano structure inside. And for this uh, ultra microtomy sample, usually for TEM, the setting of the like uh, to the end of the uh, sessioning using diamond knife, it uh, we need to cut around fifty to hundred nanometer. So this one, most of the time, used for biological sample of a soft material if you're working on polymer sample. And this one is quite common. This one on material sample. This one also on material sample. And yes, so to actually these tables is to highlight that the TEM that you have in uh, cow is actually applicable for all four samples. Mm. And all four types of samples here. So the next one is actually on the uh, a little bit of history of the development of the TEM of uh, the model that you have in your lab. And um, yeah, that is actually the 120 kV TEM Hitachi. And the development of the TEM is uh, by Hitachi of this model is, uh, is already started since 1996 with the first model of H7500. So it's come with a unique dual mode objective lens. I will cover a little bit of this. It's quite an interesting uh, technology behind the design. And later on, four years later, it uh it 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 uh Hitachi introduced another model H seven six zero zero, and this is the world first autofocus in TEM. This one is an, a revolution in the TEM uh, or even like EM, and it 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 you will see that slowly and slow um slowly all the electron microscope they try they they start to introduce a lot of auto auto um function so that to improve the operation or in and uh, improve the the fast imaging and analysis and yeah then later on is the 7650 is the integration of TEM and CCD camera so there are actually two at least two camera in your in in the TEM and the next one 2010 is actually 7700 and they integrate the viewing screen camera and you see that this part actually closed now no longer have the binocular here and this starting from this version everything is operated under like uh under normal light you don't need to be in dark room so if you have experience in the tm 
and uh, most of the uh, conventional one, they need the dark room to operate the TEM so that when you search your sample, you search on the poster screen can be see clearer. And if long term in the dark room, your eyes may be affected. But starting from this one, actually all dark room has been removed. And your um, the TEM in in cow is actually the latest model for uh, in this series. So it's seven eight three zero, and it's actually some few things to highlight here is the the dual mode objective lens here, and also um the normal room light operation and a lot of automated function, and yes, it also have come with the advanced image navigation and automated uh image stitching, the STEM EDX. So I will uh introduce like a uh, session by session of all these uh function that you uh we have this one i will just go through it because yeah and yes the operational panel um a little bit on the 7830 uh tm that you have in cow and because this 7800 actually there are three three types of tm design in in this series so how to a lot of time when they come to tm they mention about resolution or even the 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 view of view of uh the large view of view and this one is uh, um other than the the electron beam the electron source itself another thing to determine this one is actually the distance of your objective lens and this one if you look at this diagram uh objective lens can be classified by the size of the pore piece gap if you remember the diagram that uh miss sheila introduced uh in the beginning so TEM sample is actually between under the condenser lens but above the objective uh, objective uh, lens. But uh, in fact, the real diagram of this one, right, is actually here is objective lens, the objective aperture here. There is this pore piece of objective objective lens, and your specimen actually inserted uh, into this this uh, tiny area. And the shorter the objective uh, pore piece, the um, higher the resolution that you can get. Yeah, this part. And this part but if let's say for some biomedical field like this one usually for material people they prefer this kind of configuration but for biomedical field they are not uh they are looking on the ultra structure or some other like uh, they're not aiming for uh high resolution they're actually aiming for large field of view then larger uh gap of the pore piece will be better and with this uh uh with this um this kind of like uh, um, uh, understanding, that's why that is come with three, three type of like uh, models in this uh, HT7800 series. And for the, this one is aimed for the biological field one. And for UTP one is actually the, the ultimate, uh, ultimate uh, TM, the imaging for the high resolution TM. And it's very suitable for a lot of samples that are uh, beam sensitive because it's actually uh, 120 kb and it can achieve the high resolution even this one if you go to you understand the optics in the tem even like at 200 kb tem uh, by physics if you calculate that sometimes if you without some corrected inside 200 kb also give you around 0 0.23 to 4 nanometer but with the design of the special uh, objective lens this one at 200 kV TEM, uh, TEM in um, cow, you actually can achieve as low as 0 0.19 nanometer. And your the system there is actually come with STEM and also nano analysis. So, yep. The next one is actually the, the a little bit, uh, uh, this is the unique things in the TEM system that you all have in UTP. So this is Hitachi original dual mode objective lens. And the dual mode objective lens, the explanation you can see from this diagram and the table here. And it comes with two uh, imaging mode. So both already in this system. You don't need to have two systems to have both high resolution mode and high contrast mode. And because uh, the design for that is actually there is a, a virtual lens here. So for high resolution mode, this uh, mini lens is excited at reverse polarity. So it uh, with upper lens polarity here. So shorter lens will be will be achieved here. So when the shorter focal length is achieved, then higher resolution image can be obtained. And this one is actually aimed for mostly if you are want to go for high magnification, then you choose high resolution mode. And you are, you no need to for this one actually no need to do any adjustment. Just click on the on the system itself, and um, no need to change the 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 height also. 
And if let's say someone is actually aiming for wide area observation, and yeah, just click on the high contrast mode. And by clicking the high contrast mode, then the Mimi lens now is assigned at the same polarity with the upper lens now, and lo longer focal length is uh, achieved, and you allow for, for uh, high contrast imaging condition for wide area uh, observation. So it's a little bit of design uh, behind this uh, TEM. So instead of two microscopes with uh, different objective lenses, so this is one microscope with a double gap mode capability. And there's another thing is, is, is also a simple use for these two modes, just a clicking, I, I think, yeah. And there's an example for high resolution imaging. So this is under HR mode. So aiming for high resolution, this is silicon sample. This is after FIB, yeah, focus ion beam sample. If not, uh, you need to have a thin lamella to obtain this uh, image and you need to cut this sample along, uh, along this one is along, along 110 direction. Yeah, along the 110 crystal direction. And so that you can see the 111 plan of the silicon around 0 0.31 nanometer. And you see that the lattice of the silicon can be clearly observed in this TEM. And another one is, this is a 002 plan here. Uh, is, a, is 0 0.27 nanometer. And this one, if you can get a very nice uh, high resolution uh, lattice imaging, you can actually use the system to generate the FFT image. FFT image is uh, similar with your uh, diffraction imaging. So all these things is actually uh, the, the plan is uh, need to, it is aligned well with your lattice plan in your image. And this one is to show the example of the high contrast imaging. This is uh, if you're working on the polymer sample, then most of the time polymer sample because inside Hello, yeah, the AV is muted. Doctor, uh, you has been muted. Yeah, can okay. can you uh, can All you right. see my screen now? Yes. Okay. Okay. Uh, do you miss any part or not? Every okay. If okay, I move on. Uh. <laughs> So the next one is another example of the T uh, imaging HR mode and HC mode. For some of the example, I will just go through quite quite uh quite quite uh I just show you because there are a lot of example. If later on if you want to know more about the which kind of sample, I will go come back to this. So yep, mm, there is low accelerating voltage for this hydro hydrosy appetite here. Want to mention 40 kV use because this had hydrosy appetite is very beam sensitive. So a little bit higher KV is actually what damage the sample. So once the beam uh, hit on the sample, then the, the structure, this structure you see here actually will collapse. So need the lower KV to do the imaging. And uh, at, at even at this low KV, you still can observe the lattice here. And this is the gold sample, single, uh, single crystal. Yeah, this is another sample of the electrocatalyst here. Mm. Nephew, uh, you can see the lattice. Mm, for the for the uh carbon graphite carbon here, mm. and you have the platinum here, yeah. Okay, so this actually just to show you that there are the a lot of like a function, uh auto function also in uh the TEM in cow here, and also the operation now is uh becomes um simplified compared with the conventional TEM. So, so I think this one I will just go through, and the, with the drift correction one, if you without if you drift correction function. You have all these things to, uh, to, to stop the correction. But uh, here I would like to actually mention, uh, emphasize a little bit, because even the system come with the drift correction, it, it means that most of the sample in TEM, you are looking into high resolution or, or the structure, the sample is actually small. 
and or either small or very thin. And all these samples, when you go into TEM, you imagine that your, your room condition is actually in uh, ambient condition. You go into TEM, is at high vacuum. And when the electron beam go down, with this deep correction, it can help with the, to reduce the drifting. But uh, sometimes if your sample is, uh, is uh, not stable, you need to, like after putting in a sample, just put in the, uh, make it into the TEM chamber, maybe 10 to 15 minutes, let the sample to settle down in the high vacuum uh, condition first. So the imaging later will be better. Because if, if you observe that, if let's say you have a little bit of drift, your image, huh, if you see this one, all the things is actually the, the, the image not so, not so nice anymore. You, you need a sharp, sharp image without drifting. So, so other than this function, also need to consider of the sample, sample part when put in. Mm. And the next one, yeah. So this is a little bit of like the auto function here. I think the operation wise for this one uh, may uh, depends. Uh, yeah, it's the auto focus. I will go straight directly to some other because operation may not be direct interest for you all. Yeah, this is uh, an example of all these uh, function that available in the system that this is to measure the gag oxide layer for a 3D non flash memory. This one also prepared by FIB. So the sample is a little bit tilted like this and I want to view it and later on do measurement is to be kind of like uh, uh, aligned well with the horizontal line and the vertical line. So use this real time rotation function to make it kind of like uh, the or orientation that I want. Then after that, I use this real time contrast adjustment function in the system to do the contrasting. So you see that the contrast has been uh, improved compared with the previous one. And later on, you do the live measurement. So this one is actually the customer aiming, uh, want to measure the oxide layer of this uh, structure. So after that, they will keep repeating the same process and all this is actually uh, the auto function in the software. So, yep. And the next one, this one image navigation, just go through. Yeah, that's the, the, they have come with this EMIP EX also. So you actually can, uh, the sample can be driven back. If you um, go to the second or third, then this maybe when you see at the first image, you want to go back to the original location. Remember the sample have still need to be in. Huh? Then you double click on this uh, image used in the EMIP EX. Then you click auto drive start. It will go back to the first location that you save the image. Mm. So, so, so it's a very useful function because sometimes when you search for first area, then maybe the first area you, 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 you would like to analyze later and you go for second, third and fourth. And suddenly you realize that the first area, oh, there are something that you forget to capture. Then you come back. So you go to the EMIP EX software, you double click at the image that you want to analyze. You double click the uh, auto drive start, it will go back. Mm. And these are the few sample holders that are available for their various types to cater for, for, for various types of the, the uh, uh, sample analysis. I think in uh, SCAL is it come with this X-ray one for EDX analysis. And this one is the single tip holder. And I think for some of them may find it useful fun is this tree specimen holder. This one is uh, most of the time is requested by uh, people who do in ultra microtomy sample or for industry sample. Because uh, uh, compared with the, the uh, traditional sample usually come in one slot only. This one is come in three slots. So there are two types of tree specimen holder. And you can have, let's say ultra microtomy sample, you cut it. And you, you ultra microtomy sample, usually there are many sections and you actually not sure which section is the area of interest that you have. So you use different grid already collected the ultra microtomy se section. Then you put in into this tree slot, then you put into the TN sample. So you actually save time, you don't need to take a sample out and then change another grid. And, and for this one, it's very useful that let's say your, you actually analyze one here uh, there is one in area of interest. Another one is actually on the third grid at this one. Because your holder, you didn't change. You didn't uh, take out your sample. And after, uh, maybe you analyze this sample first. Then after that, when you come to the end of your analyzing, you actually go to the sample. But when you check your image, you actually want to go back to this one. You still can go back to the to, to this TN grid with this three specimen holder. It is another um, uh, kind of like uh, useful thing for some of the, the samples that you actually have multiple 
analysis. Yeah. And yes, this is uh, uh, some extra function. So for particle search, if you are for the particle sample, you need to search particles. Yeah. And the next one, yeah, I'll show you some of the example of the high resolution imaging. So I just did skip this one because already, yes, this is the high resolution image to, to demonstrate that even at the lower and lower KV, it's actually still give you high resolution. And this sample pyrophyllite is, uh, is a one type, it's a uh, phyllo silicate mineral sample. And if you're working on geology sample or mineral sample, you realize that all this mineral sample is beam sensitive. And beam sensitive sample try to go for low KV. But one thing, most of the time, if you go for low KV, it will affect the resolution. But the design of this TM with the, the if you remember the very beginning uh, introduced about the uh, gap of the pore piece, is actually st you still can get the re high resolution at low KV. So you see this one, 120 KV, 80 KV, 60 KV, 40 KV. Even as, as low as 40 KV, you still can observe the lattice here. But if you would like to compare that, I would prefer the imaging at either 80 KV or 60 KV. So too high, also not so good for that. It can start to see the high KV. Is actually some of that is kind of like, you see this part, a little bit of like the beam sensitive here. But uh, this one, um, 40 KV, it only show you that you can ob obtain the, the lattice, but compare with the clear, um, the, the resolution wise, 80 and 60 give you clearer image. So sometimes all these things you have to put in the sample, you try different KV. Yeah. Um, when you when you when you communicate with your officer in Kao, you may need to explain to them also like whether your your uh, samples is uh, whether beam sensitive or, or things like that, so that they help them to easy to analyze your sample. And yeah, this is actually sample from, from Kao last time. So yeah, different. Mm. Yeah, the carbon, my multi wall carbon nanotube. Yeah, you see that the, the lattice here and this the titanium nanoparticles here. So the lattice imaging. Mm. So this is the mesoporous silica. Yeah, the mesoporous structure here. Mm. And this silica, I think most of you understand that the silica sample also very beam sensitive. So you need to, uh, most of the time, it, 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 it will damage, if you go for higher KV, it will damage the lattice. Mm. Okay, and this one is mesoporous uh, silica. This is that one, just on that one is like a, a, a thick one. This one is like a uh, silica powder. So if you zoom in, yeah, you can see the por uh, the meso truck structure here, two hundred thousand, uh, two hundred thousand times. So this one, yeah, the silic silicon single crystal. Oh, this one just now that one. What I show is along one one zero direction. So you can see one 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 plan, but this one is along one o o direction. One o o direction here, you see in different kind of like orientation here. So this one is the FIB structure for the fin pad, and this one you can see silicon. For this one, I think they cut as thin as twenty to thirty nanometer for this lamella, and this is graphene structure. Yeah, graphene for this one is actually yeah. You can see the graphene structure here. And it's a single layer here. Mm. And this one, silicon. Yeah, this is along one one o direction. And this one, huh, this one is uh for hard cemented carbon carbon zero bit is a hard material. And for this sample, uh also prepare using FIB because it's a large sample. For FI, uh for TM, we need a thin section to put in. And this hard sample, if you use an um uh, the best way to prepare this one is uh, focus ion beam to cut it. Uh, and it takes longer time because this material is uh, uh, hard. And when prepared into um, the thin lamella, you can see that this is lower neck here. The structure, this part and this part is different. These are more on the polycrystalline structure here. And this one, you see that it's actually kind of like nothing here. But when you zoom in here, you can realize you start to observe the lamella structure here. And further zoom in this part, oh, there are actually the uh, lattice imaging here. Uh, mm. Dr. AB? Yes? Uh, just a kind reminder, we have another five minutes for this session. Okay. Thank so, you. Yeah, and this one is on the uh, 20 kV, uh, no, the different kV on the carbon nanotube. So you see that the contrast increasing at lower kV. And the TM that uh, in uh, cow actually you can go as low as 20 kV. 
for some of the beam sensitive material. Yeah, and for this one, yeah, the carbon material, single wall carbon uh, tube as well. Mm. And the high contrast one, I will show you another example here is there are a few more examples, but I think you may interested is that one corona, uh, the coronavirus. Oh, this one is um, you, some of you working on the POE polymer sample. Ah, this is the example of the, this is a cellulose nanofiber sample. This one without stain at low KV, you can capture. This one is at higher KV with staining. So this one is uh, you you prepare it in the embedded in the in the polymer sample resin and then cut it using ultra microtome and observe the laminar structure of the poly polyolefin elastoma. And I would like to show you the this one. I think most of you may be interested in this. This is the observation of the novel coronavirus using uh, the this this series of TEM. And this is the the, the coronavirus here. And a lot of times that actually interested in analyzing the, the spike here of the coronavirus. So um yeah, it is it's a it's a so it's something interesting. Yeah, maybe maybe yeah, you all will, will, will be interested. And this is adenovirus uh, observation. And yeah, there are actually few parts on the electron diffraction. Yeah, your uh for the electron diffraction part, you actually can do the diffraction on uh, the, the some of the crystal uh, all the crystalline material and from the um, the electron diffraction here you actually can analyze what kind of crystal structure of your sample uh, is yeah this is one of the poly uh, not polycrystalline this is actually single crystal particles uh, within the electron beam and it, it, it have few nanoparticles there and you can analyze the sample and this one is all abstract samples but are different kind of abstract sample how we analyze that is after TM imaging, you actually can't see any different of the of the different structure. So analyze using your diffraction pattern and also EDS spectrum. And from that, you 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 categorize them. What are the what type of the sample is this? Yeah, they are both chemical different and also their crystal structure different. Yeah, it's different. Mm. So I will just this is another and advanced thing. I will I, I think time not allowed. If you would like to know more, I can explain that. Uh, Maybe, yeah, you, you can you can ask later. So yeah, I think a little bit is on the stem EDX. So EDX section. So you have both bright field stem imaging and dark field stem imaging. Bright field stem imaging will be quite similar with your TEM image here. This is the polymer sample. Dark field stem imaging will reflect more on your uh, elemental compositional. So so this one, yeah, this is also bright field stem imaging and dark field stem imaging. So if let's say you see a little bit contrast, uh, the different contrast in your dark field stem, go for go for later on you analyze using your your EDX. So like for let's say this nanoparticle sample, if you go at bright field stem, you you just see similar some imaging in your TEM. But if you go for dark field stem, you see that this part is actually brighter compared to this one. It tells you that your samples is actually come with different uh elements. So later on, move on with your EDX analysis. So this is a BS, uh, the BS, the dark field stem imaging, and this is your aluminum K alpha map, silicon K alpha map, titanium K alpha map, bismuth L alpha map, and cerium L alpha map. So the brighter one, if this one is actually bismuth, and this one, yeah, you later on can actually overlay all this image to 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 see where which is the location. Hmm. So so sample with different element, consider stem and EDX. Yeah. Okay, this is FIB sample, and also all this is the dark field. Yeah, this is the dark field stem imaging, and from here I can see different contrast. And later on, uh, doing EDX analysis is very nice. Uh, EDX mapping here, like this one is the tung tungsten plug here, this part, and this one you can see that this is the oxygen, is the is the oxygen here, and this one like for this one is the sil silicon nitride. I think yeah, this is silicon here, yeah. Hmm. And the tongues, the titanium here, mm. is a DRAM structure. Yep. Okay. I think another things that will highlight that is the gem software that you all have in your cowlet as well. This is a software to help you all to analyze your own crystal structure. So you actually can generate like a the software like to understand your structure. You can rotate and then to see what type of how it align, and also you can see the video. Yeah.
this one is actually along just now that one is along one one oh oh direction and you rotate rotate to change to another direction you come back yeah so all this you can do with your germ software in in the lab yeah so also it will generate the simulated uh, electron diffraction then you match with the electron diffraction uh uh saed image that you capture using your tem if let's say aligner then it is actually uh then you can say that they are matched this is the simulated uh, uh, in, uh simulated unit cell structure of titania and also with this software it also can simulate the xld pattern because i think a lot of crystal structure you also go for the xld analysis first mm. okay i think i will stop here there are actually uh, a lot of things mo lots more that i uh can be can be do yeah but i think yeah we'll just just stop here yeah this is our office in Puchong. yeah thank you mm. all right i think mm. uh, that's all thank you dr ab for mm. answering the questions no uh, okay. next uh, we have one last session with uh, mr anwar on ulab equipment booking for carl uh, mr anwar you may start your session now uh, okay, it's uh, our last slot for today. Uh, actually, it is uh, to refresh uh, you on how to apply or book equipment at a CAL uh, using ULAB. Uh, as usual, first you have to get to, to go to the website, which is uh, ulab.utp.edu.my, and then we have to register actually. And then you just follow the sample testing request procedure. They have about nine steps, and if you you can read by you can read from here, and also if you want to the detail uh, DIY on how to 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 book your sample uh, slot, you can go to the uh, number nine, which is uh, DIY is here. Uh, just click here, and then uh, you just follow the instruction. Uh, okay, I think so. Next, this a uh, uh, ULAB flowchart. Uh, sorry, it's a uh, start from here. Um, you have to do a request, mm, and then I can see it. <laughs> Uh, okay, yeah, this is it's a normal uh, flow chart. I think I, I can explain about this. Maybe uh, should I go to next, next slide, please? Okay, this is actually uh, what happened when you do uh, when you do a booking. It's a ULAB summary. Okay, student normally we request for service in ULAB. And then the status, uh, the status will be uh, called to agree, and then uh, call personnel to check the request and issue a quotation. It's, this is all this uh, done by our technologies. And then next step is a uh, requester will receive the quotation by email, and then the requester need to pass the quotation to the API. Actually, the requester need to download the quotation and ask the supervisor or PI to request for approval budget from URISES. And then uh, once approved by URISES, CAL will uh, proceed with the service request and uh, we do the slot allocation. Okay, uh, once uh, completed, CAL will pass the result. Uh, and then uh, finally, CAL will uh, back charge to the cost center. Okay, next. Uh, okay, this uh, sample slot machine room is uh, located at uh, block P, CAL, at room uh, P0008. Okay, as you can see here, at the uh, ground floor. And then what you need to do is uh, you enter the lab and then you can see the instruction to place your sample in the uh, uh, red uh, zip bag. And also you have to place the sample with the uh, red bag at the allocated uh, box. Okay, uh, I think uh, that's all. Hope you, okay. And thank you and also please uh, fill in the form. 
Uh, thank you, Mr. Anwar. Is there yeah. any question for ULAB booking? Any question from the crowd on ULAB booking system? At the, at the meantime, you can uh, scan this QR code for the feedbacks of this webinar sessions. Okay, you may drop the question in the chat box if you have an idea later on. Uh, okay, thank you, Mr. Anwar, Madam Nohashila, and our guest, Dr. AB, for the great for the great presentations. It was a pleasure to have you with us today, Dr. AB. Uh, and for all, kindly please fill up the feedback form. Uh, and then this is for the our future improvement. Uh, thank you, everyone. Before we end, before we end up this sessions uh, i would like to request everyone to turn on your camera please for a photo session okay everyone here we have 10 seconds Okay. Okay, in count three. Okay. You can see both of you still coming. All of you still coming there. Okay, in count of three, two, one. One more time. Three, two, one. Thank you. Well, uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, that wraps up our afternoon session. On behalf of Centralized Analytical Laboratory, Laboratory Management Department, thank you to you all for making time in your busy schedules to join uh, us this uh, afternoon, se afternoon sessions. And during this webinar session, we are very, we are, we apologize if there is any, uh, any things that we, you feel that it's not uh, happy for that. And we, we seek your kind assistant to give a feedback for our future improvement. And it's been our pleasure to host this webinar series and we wish you all a pleasant day and see you again next time. Thank you. Assalamualaikum.